Hey guys, what's up? My name is Sky Webb and I forget my fucking injury because I haven't done it in ages. It's alright, just breathe. You can feel. Hi guys, it's Sky Webb and I'm here to talk to you about a true crime that I cannot get off my mind. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? My name is Sky Webb and I'm here to talk about a true crime story that I cannot get off my mind. But before I get started, I just want to put out a little disclaimer that I mean no harm to any of the victims or the victims' families and I wish everyone who was hurt within this story the utmost peace and solace I've embraced or in recovery. With that out of the way, hi, happy True Crime Thursday. Um, welcome back to my channel, or just welcome if you've never been here before. I am Sky Webb, and this is actually my first time filming of 2021 because I have had a super long year long i mean it's not you yet but anyway i've had a long break from youtube uh for health reasons and mental health reasons and i am super excited to get back but i just want to say thank you to everyone who has continually supported me throughout youtube and who has liked my videos and subscribed obviously and just done all those things i really really appreciate it especially since i have been away but still see people watching or interacting with my videos makes me really happy because um i just needed a break so i do apologize but i am back and today we're looking at the crimes committed by Michelle Notek, also known as Shelly. And I have to let you know that there is a content warning for both child abuse and sexual abuse. So if that's not something you want to hear about today, tonight, whenever, uh, don't watch this. On the 15th of April, 1954, Shelly, or Michelle Watson, as she was born, uh, was born to a pretty broken family that consisted of four people, her alcoholic mother, her absent father, and her... Uh, younger brothers and she was born in Raymond Washington Shelley would continue to live in the rural town of Raymond for majority of her life she grew up there she bullied her brothers there she then falsely accused her father at age 15 of uh, rape falsely accused just want to make that very clear uh, before then getting eloped at 17 and then getting divorced and then remarrying twice uh, before having kids all in Raymond Shelley finally found the one when she ended up marrying David Notek, who was a really calm, quiet, uh, very soft-natured guy, but he was very kind and very polite. And he was actually a Navy veteran who now worked in construction, a really successful construction company, um, in order to support his life, his new family, with his wife Shelley and his three beautiful daughters with her. Now, two of Shelley's daughters, Nikki and Sammy, they were products of her previous uh, marriages and they were 12 and 9, but the youngest, Tori, she was born in 1989 and she was a product of both David and Shelley together. So the family and especially the two parents, Shelley and David, they were really kind of seen as model parents. They were seen as model citizens even. And they were lucky enough to live in a nice house that easily fit them and their children. They were really quite comfortable because of David's work. And so they, they were in a really good spot. And if you were on the outside looking in, you would think that they had it all and they were happy and perfect. They were healthy, they had beautiful children. But what outsiders couldn't see was how abusive Shelley could really be. She had been abusive in her previous marriages. She had become really aggressive. Uh, and violent to all of her ex-partners and now to David who it was his nature to just kind of sit back and take it because he wasn't a very outspoken aggressive person himself so he put up with quite a lot from Shelley and without any knowledge of this abuse because you know David didn't say anything about it a lot of people started turning to Shelley for help. Now as I said they were viewed as model citizens beautiful people like friends and family weren't hard to come by and they all loved them and thought that they were saints and so when people were going through sort of hard times and didn't really know what to do financially and where to live and this and that uh they would turn to Shelley and people wanted to live with her for cheaper board and rent and all that kind of th stuff things I don't know what I was trying to say the first guest to stay with the Nautex was actually family 13 year old nephew Shane Watson Shane's dad had actually been sent to prison and his mum just neglected him and so he didn't really have anywhere to go he was only 13 and he was young he wanted to study he wanted to work he wanted to do all that and so he went to go and live with his uncle and aunt he moved in around 1988 and didn't move out move out again until 1994 where he just kind of vanished. Shelley and David 
claimed that uh, Shane had just run off to Alaska for work and without any way for anyone to contact him it was unable to be verified and so people just kind of didn't care I guess. The family second guess a woman named Kathy Loreno had actually gone missing the same year as Shane just a little bit earlier and she had also stayed with the family for five years. Kathy was an ex-hairdresser who had lost her job and was struggling financially so she gratefully accepted uh, Shelly's offer to let her move in in exchange for babysitting. Shelly and David claim that Kathy went missing with a man. They claim she fled to Hawaii. Ooh. But it seemed really, really sudden and out of character to anyone who knew her. And then the third and final guest to stay in the Noddick's home was a 57-year-old man named Ronald Woodworth. Ronald had also lost his job and again was struggling financially, and so he accepted Shelley's offer as well. He moved in in 1999 to help manage his uh, money issues, and he disappeared in 2003. So what happened to Shelley's... Yes, because that's a hell of a coincidence that all three of them vanished off into happily never after, you know? Well, when poor little Shane moved in, he realized that his aunt was a big, big fan of rules and even a bigger fan of punishments if those rules were ever broken. If a rule was broken, for example, Shane using the bathroom without asking Shelly's permission first, uh, they would all be punished, him and the cousins. And she did this so often that she even had a name for it she named this abuse i suppose that's really all it is um and she named it wallowing so every time someone did something wrong she would wallow them or whatever and she had a wide range of punishments that she liked to inflict on the children but when it came to shane she primarily uh liked to just strip him down naked and have him work in the backyard and throw cold water on him she would sometimes make him get all up in the mud and like roll around like a pig and then if she was punishing two kids she would have them both stripped down naked and she would force them to slow dance in the backyard in front of like not everyone but like obviously if neighbors and things were going past you can see them so it's embarrassing in that regard and like also they're naked slow dancing with their cousins so fuck that and she did all these things plus more to her own daughters when it came to punishing the girls she would do the usual, like have them go outside and uh, strip down and do chores and throw water on them. But when it came to the girls, she also liked to humiliate them a fair bit um, in weird ways. She would make them grab like actual fistfuls of pubic hair, like from down there from themselves and just hand it to her. And she would just take the hair off them. She would also lock them in dog kennels and chicken coops and all kinds of horrible, horrible things. When the family's second guest, Kathy, moved in, this all stopped for a very small amount of time uh, before Shelley's fake persona just kind of wore off, you know? So this time, instead of just abusing the children, she actually started abusing Kathy as well. And Kathy, being there desperately in need um, of that financial support, she felt like she couldn't really do anything because if she left she would become homeless and if she stayed she would just continue to be abused so either way she felt like she was kind of screwed so she decided just to stay so at least she has food in her house you know so that's what she did she stayed and she slept in the basement next to the boiler and she did labor in the nude for shelly and david just like she was ordered to and she would be fed sedatives every single night be fed a drug cocktail uh to put her to sleep and to get her out of it uh, because she thought that she had to and she had no choice. At some point over the five year period that Kathy stayed with uh, the family, Shelly decided to start monitoring her food and by that I basically just mean starving her. She would keep food away from her and keep her away from food and gave her tiny tiny rations when she was given food. And it was said that she lost something like a hundred pounds in the time that she uh, stayed with Shelly and the family, which is a lot of fucking weight to lose. And Shane happened to notice this. And so he actually managed to take some photos of Kathy before she ran off. <coughs> I just had like serious crazy eyes when I said that, but it's because I was about to sneeze, so fuck. I'm not entirely sure how Kathy actually died because it seemed all the reports and everything that I read was kind of 50-50. Um, 
some people think that she died from malnourishment, um, from starving and all of that, which makes sense. I mean, it's not exactly something you can do forever. Anyway, uh, Shane was a smart kid. And so when Kathy went missing, he had these photos of her looking obviously very, very sickly. He was like, okay, something ain't right. There's no way this bitch went missing to Hawaii with some man. Like, how does that just happen? It doesn't fucking just happen. Like, I'm not gonna worry. So he took these photos to his cousin, Nikki, and said, look, I'm gonna take this to the police. I know you're being abused. I know I'm being abused. And now Kathy has literally disappeared. There's no way she's in fucking Hawaii. Now, although Nikki was abused just as much as Shane, if not worse, probably a lot worse. There was even one time that Nikki's head got shoved through a glass window, like through a glass window um, by her mum. Despite all of this, Nikki went straight to her mum and she dibby dobbed on Shane and told her mum and her dad what his plan was. Obviously, Shelly uh, wasn't happy about this. She was very angry. And so she went to her husband and she yelled and cried and bullied him until they had devised the perfect plan. Their plan was for David to go and shoot Shane, his nephew, and then tell everyone that he went to Alaska for work. And that's exactly what they did. They told everyone that he went to Alaska for work uh, after killing him, their own nephew, fucking Nikki. Why would you do that to him? <laughs> And at this point, all three daughters wanted to believe that this was true because Kathy had gone missing and now Shane had gone missing and they were all very close to Shane. Like, how could you not be in that kind of um, circumstance? <laughs> and so they all wanted to desperately believe that he had actually just gone to Alaska for work, but they were like, that doesn't sound right. Like, that's a little bit fishy. That doesn't make sense. <sighs> and Nikki felt very, very guilty for that. <laughs> Nikki knew that there could be you know, potentially be a connection between Kathy and Shane both going missing. She was especially concerned about Shane and what might have happened, but she was probably too afraid, I'm just gonna guess, um, to ask her parents or question her parents about it, and so she just did it. In 1999, the third and final guest to ever move into the Nautix home was Ron, and he was also another one of Shelley's friends who needed a little bit of financial support. And so he gratefully accepted an offer and moved in with her. And when he did, he slowly started to cop the abuse from her as well. This time though, she came up with new ways to torment people. Ron would still cop all the usual uh, ways of abusing someone, like having to do all the chores outside, uh, naked or in his underwear or having water thrown on him. He had to do a bunch of different labor and you know, whatever at the back which again is just humiliating and also just not fun, like doing any kind of chore naked in the elements mustn't be fun. And then on top of that, she forced him to cut ties with all of his friends and family. And when he sort of tried to push back or, um, you know, refuse, not refuse, but just, you know, just tried to push back and not really do that. Uh, she would punish him further by making him drink his own piss his own urine, sorry. <laughs> he was also forced at one point to jump uh, from the second story of the house, which is pretty much the roof. So, <sighs> it's just so brutal. So she forced him to jump from the second story onto the gravel driveway with no shoes on um, and no protection, which obviously gave him a range of really painful injuries, like jumping from that high is not good for your legs or your knees or your feet. Uh, and it's definitely not good for you to be covered in gravel scratches and grazes and shit. So poor Ron, but it only got worse for him. On top of even making him jump, she kind of literally like rubbed salt in the wound because after he was finished, she literally poured bleach onto his cuts and scratches and injuries uh, to further torture him. Ron, uh, Ron eventually died from his injuries, sadly, because he just, he couldn't, he couldn't look after himself where he was and he was continually being abused, which just made every injury that he already had so much worse. And so he eventually just passed away and he was reported missing in around 2003. <laughs> I got crazy. <laughs> eyes again. When Ron died, Shelly actually took him to her husband David and said, hey look, he killed himself. Um, and she put on a really good show for uh, her husband 
pretending or maybe not pretending I'm not sure because obviously I'm not in her head uh, to be scared so when Kathy had gone missing a police officer had actually come and spoken to Shelly just a very quick like oh she's like you know what is the whatever the fuck so there was no investigation there was nothing going on but Shelly was like acting super super terrified that like oh my god the police are gonna get us they're gonna uh, the family like just literally like losing her mind and David being like kind of the weaker minded person um he just listened and listened and listened and uh, believed her. So David, being the man that he is, um, decided that he would dig a grave to bury their friend Ron, who had killed himself. The couple again made up a story about uh, Ron running away for work, but by this time, no one fucking believed them. Even their own daughter, Tori, did not believe them. And she, at this point, was 14 years old and she she knew that they were shady her older sisters had already moved out because they fucking had had enough like her, nikki's head had already gone through a glass door and so tori contacted her sisters and said hey i want to take this to the police so all three daughters talked to authorities about their just their concerns about the abuse that they endured that shane endured that kathy endured um and pretty much just said hey we're kind of like maybe they didn't just like run away like i don't know but like you are the police but like i just have a feeling that like maybe they didn't just run away and with that the police got a warrant to search the notex family home and by the end of 2003 they had searched the entire home and found poor ron's buried body so on the 8th of august the couple were arrested and david was super forthcoming super helpful um, when talking to police, but he had almost a gullible, just very naive uh, way about him. He also confessed to uh, burning Kathy's body to get rid of the evidence. Um, he claimed that he had just found her dead. Uh, it didn't seem like he had any involvement or knew of any involvement from his wife, even though either way it's her fault because she was starving her. Um, but yeah, burned her body, poor little thing. And he also claims that when he did find her dead, uh, he tried to do CPR and tried to, you know, like, alive her again, but decided not to call the paramedics, which doesn't really make sense. Anyway, David was charged with second degree murder for shooting uh, Shane, which I'm not entirely sure why it's second degree and not first degree murder. And Shelly was charged with second degree murder as well as manslaughter, which again, what fucking weak charges, like, who was in charge of that? So David, he was actually released in 2018 and he was forgiven by all three daughters. Obviously, as I've said throughout this entire video, he was a very weak natured man, kept to himself, didn't have much of a backbone. And I guess that his daughters, his family, you know, feel bad for him for that, which I mean, I don't like grow a fucking backbone, you cunt, you don't just kill someone, but anyway. Shelly, on the other hand, is due for early release in 2022, which is next fucking year. And all three of her daughters have yet to forgive her. Not only have the girls not forgiven her, but they're actually fucking petrified of this woman getting out of jail because they just have so many unresolved issues with her. She really wasn't even charged for the abuse that they went through. And they're genuinely very scared of this woman getting out. They think that she might, you know, show up at their houses and they just want nothing to do with her now this story was a little bit hard to research um just due to the amount of misinformation there was a lot of dates and times and uh things like that that just almost every single article had a different fucking date and i'm like okay then so a lot of these are just like kind of broad um time stamps so that i wasn't you know giving you anything too wrong i do apologize for that though but that, my friends, is the case of Shelly Notek, another fucking horrible mother. Let me know what you think about this one in the comments down below. What do you think of David and his just, his nature? And what do you think about Shelly and her getting out next to you? Do you think she should get out or do you think she should have had a longer sentence? I definitely think she should have had a longer sentence. Definitely a different sentence. Like, they were all first degree murder as far as I'm concerned. But anyway. Let me know in the comments down below or you can head over to my social medias which are linked in the description down below and make sure that you guys subscribe so that you can see all my new videos i'm going to be posting every single thursday just like i used to 
um, all about true crime and I would love to have you be a part of it. Uh, make sure you give this a like if you feel like it. I would really appreciate it. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you feel like it. I would really appreciate it and be sure to subscribe so that you can see all my new videos. I am going to post every single Thursday all about true crime and I would love to have you be a part of it. Make sure you guys are being safe out there. Look after your loved ones. Be careful. Thank you for watching. Bye. It's hot. <laughs> I normally dip it in salt, so it's cold. I normally add about a kilo and a half salt. Not too. So it's helpful. Need to close your arteries. Don't look at me.